Hare right, Krishna, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Harry Krishna's in Britain podcast. This is episode number 35. Uh, we've managed to get to 35 episodes. And we've managed to keep you engaged uh, each week and every week with some wonderful guests from around the UK and other parts of the world. And this is a very different podcast. Visually, you can see it's very different for the first time ever. I'm actually in the same room as the person I'm going to interview. Uh, and that's because we are broadcasting this podcast from Glastonbury, uh, which, according to the Archbishop of Canterbury, is the number one pilgrimage site uh, in the UK, which is very believable. Glastonbury is a is a hotbed for different religious traditions, including the Gaudiya Vaishnav tradition. Um, Gaudiya Vaishnavism has been quite strong here for many, many decades. And I'm here today at the brand new uh, Gaudiya Vaishnav Bhakti Yoga Hare Krishna temple that's opened here in Glastonbury. Uh, you know, devotees have lived here for many decades, but to have an exclusive Hare Krishna temple uh, is quite unique. It's quite special. So we're here at the Sri Gore Kripa Dam Ashram. Got the name right. Uh, and I've come down today to meet the devotees uh, and to find out a bit more about what's going on. So we'll come on to that later, talking about the temple. But um, I'm actually here with our guest this week. Uh, Tirtana Prabhu, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Jashi Rade, Hare Krishna. Jashi Rade, 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 Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Thank you for having me. It's nice to have you. And we first met, I think, three and a half years ago, two years ago. Um, I was organizing a festival, Hare Krishna festival in Black, was Live in the St. Anne's, which is near Blackpool. Anyone's not sure of the geography. Um, and um, yeah, it, we, you were there with your your partner your wife I was there with my wife and um, um, we perform as Karuna Mandala a, a duo that plays bhajan and Krishna conscious music yep. yeah and we performed yeah. that night uh, for you at the festival yeah it was a great festival yeah, and obviously the pandemic has meant that people don't see each other for a long time and all of a sudden we both appeared in Glastonbury I actually live close by and Tishna, uh, I think still lives up that part of the UK so let's just start um, uh, Prabhuji just telling us a bit about you where you're from and a bit about your background Okay, my name Tirthanath Das was given to me by uh, His Holiness Sri Ram Bihari Das Babji in 2019, uh, just before COVID and the last time he was in the UK. My home uh, is in uh, the Ribble Valley in the north. Um, and the story of how I came to Krishna consciousness is, is quite, quite funny. Uh, in a former life, I was uh, a departmental manager with Asda Stores. And one day back in the 70s, I was called down to the customer services desk um, and told, uh, yeah, Mr. Bate, uh, there's uh, some people annoying the customers <laughs> on the car park there. Um, and they're dressed in orange and they're just annoying everybody. I said, leave them to me. I'll get rid of them. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I, I hurried down to the car park, saw them immediately because obviously you can't miss shaven heavy people in orange robes. And um, Anyway, to cut a long story short, I was there about an hour, and um, afterwards I, I came back uh, penniless, arms <laughs> of books, <laughs> records, uh, beads, and uh, I was never my life was never the same again. And that was about forty two years ago. So I so nineteen eighty. It's probably just before the late seventies. Wow. And since then. I have nailed my flag to the master of Vaishnavism, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's my, my background, yeah. So 42 years is, is a long time, well, one thing is not a long time in terms of Kali Yuga and the Yugas, yeah. but it's a long time in, 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 in an average human, human life. life of course. Um, yes. So um, we're here in Glastonbury at this brand new Hare Krishna temple. Uh, and many of you know that follow this, this broadcast that I've written a book, uh, about 200 of you have bought it, which is wonderful, the Harry Christians in Britain. Uh, and there's around 20, 20 plus mats, Gaudiya Vaishnav Sanghas and groups in the UK. And most of those, most of those are in something that we call the Sarasvat light. So those are all the mats that have uh, descended from the original Gaudiya mat that existed in the 10s, 20s and 30s in India uh, and all the descendants of the Gaudiya mat. However, there are some practitioners of Bhakti Yoga, Krishna Consciousness, Gaudi Vaishnava, that they are from other lineages. And one of those is the Nityananda Janavi Mata line. So for a number of years, the Babaji's, the spiritual guides in that line, um, have had a following in Glastonbury. So 
Tell us a bit, uh, Tirtanath, about you, you said that you, your name was given to you by Sri Rama Maharadas Babaji. Yes. So tell us a bit about him and his his teachings and, and why why does he inspire you? How does he inspire sure, you? Sure. Um, well, like as most devotees, um, my formative years were spent with ISKCON. Um, and for some reason, and I, I don't know who it was, it just wasn't progressing or going anywhere. We ran small um, uh, Kirtan parties, we ran events around Lancashire, but, but nothing really, really happened. And then one day, an ex ISKCON devotee, a good friend of mine, Satya Hari, he said, You've got to come to Glastonbury and, and see see this guy, see this guru from India. So he, he's really something else. So uh, it was the Nam Yagi 2019 on uh, Guru Purnima in July when I arrived at Glastonbury. And there was, oh, there was an amazing thing going on. There was Kirtan, there were people outside, there was Prashad. I mean, all the usual things, but it just had a really nice vibe. Because Glastonbury, as we all know, mm, mm. has that type of yeah. people. It has yeah. that type of vibe. Um, and later on that day, after we, we'd spent a, a day in Kirtan, people were having a personal uh, meeting and a personal uh, satsang with the, with the guru. Two devotees grabbed me by the arms. They threw me in front of Baba, and um, Baba gave me a name. And it was a, a beautiful occasion. And uh, so that's how I, I got involved with Baba. Now... He's been coming to Glastonbury for many years, I believe around 30 years. Uh, you know, I don't know, but it's many, many years. Uh, and so he's well known in Glastonbury. And the, 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 the place we always used to gather was called the Shekina Ashram mm -hmm. in Glastonbury for many years. Unfortunately, just uh, around COVID time, the Shekina Ashram closed. So at that point, uh, there was no venue, there was a community and a really enthusiastic community. They kept, for example, things like food distribution for the homeless, they kept that going, mm. but they were using each other's kitchens. They were meeting in each other's homes for um, Harry Nam, and, and they, they tried to keep it going the best they could, but they did not have, um, have a, a premises. So um, about a year ago, we began looking uh, at and it was tentative, you know, we didn't have any money, but we started looking for premises around. We didn't know what we were looking for, really, but we thought we've got to get something, whether it just be a little house or... And then just a few months ago, um, one or two of us came up with uh, with some funds which would get, uh, which would actually buy something quite, quite decent. And then the Daisy Centre came on the market. So... We, we put in an offer and that was refused. And then we said, okay, we'll, we'll put, put in the full, full asking amount. Um, but there were already three or four um, buyers ahead of us. So we, we, get, we gave up. And then one day out of the blue, we got a call from the, from the estate agents who said, it's back on the market. Have you got the money? Do you want to go with that area? And we, 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 we told a, a little untruth and we said, we've got the money in full, we're ready to go. And uh, so very quickly we exchanged and um, on Gora Purnima of this year, I think it was March the 18th, we took possession mm. of this property to be used as the international headquarters and the ashram for Sri Rama Bihari Dasbabshi. And we are so thrilled, excited. Um, can I talk about Glastonbury a minute? Of course you can. <laughs> of course you can. Um, we are next to St. Michael's Church. Uh, as uh, Narada Prabhu said, this is the centre of pilgrimage of Christendom. Apparently every ley line in Britain crosses underneath our temple room. Uh, yesterday I was walking and I passed um, the abbey, which was reported, reported to have been founded by Joseph of Arimathea. And the legend goes he had his nephew with him at the time, who was Jesus Christ. And there are legends that Jesus mm. has walked here. You know, maybe well, there's certainly um, two theories about Jesus, isn't there? One is that is that he came here as a child. Absolutely. Because uh, in the Bible, there's a gap between 20, uh, 12, 12, and, 12 and 30. Yeah. And then the other theory is that he didn't write. He didn't actually die. He came to Glastonbury after. So, right. I mean, so Jesus and the, and the stories around Jesus are very strongly connected with Glastonbury. Yeah, and they, they, then I walked past the, the supposed tomb of King Arthur. I mean, this this place is just a hotbed mm. of mysticism, spirituality, uh, 
Christianity, this is where we are meant to be. I'm mm. absolutely sure that this is where Krishna determined that mm. we had our temple. Yeah, I mean, for me, I had to come here because it's a, it's a Gaudiya Vaishnav Hari Krishna temple. And also because it is historic, it is groundbreaking. I think it's the first Gaudiya Vaishnav temple in the UK that's not part of the Sarasvat line or comes as one of the descendants of the Sarasvat line. So it's really, really important. And I've... Uh, I, I remember, even though I only live up the road about 30 minutes away, I first came to Glastonbury, probably not until I was about 18 or 19. I mean, my, my, I didn't come here shopping with, with my family. We'd go somewhere else. So I came here as a student, university student, to study Glastonbury. I was about 18, 19 at the time. And I was quite overwhelmed by just how eclectic it was. Um, and probably for about seven or eight years, I've had contact with devotees here. Uh, and I've always been inspired by that friendly mix. Yeah, it, uh, fr friendly is a great word. But there's something else about it, because it is so eclectic and new age. This is the one town in Britain, if you do uh, Nagasankirtan, that is where we go out on the street, we have bells, we have Mridangas drums, we have a big flag, we chant Hare Krishna. Nobody looks twice. There's nothing <laughs> unusual about it. In Glastonbury, that is not unusual. Yeah. Anywhere else where you and I have danced in the streets, it's, it's yeah. It, yeah. oh, this is really weird. But in Glastonbury, this, this is it's not strange. And it's a beautiful feeling. And when we do perform Nagasankirtan with our guru, people are folding the palms and they're bowing mm. and they're saying hello. And, and it is a wonderful, a particularly wonderful experience um, performing Harinam Nagasankirtan in Glastonbury. It's mm. so different. There's a lovely vibe. So, so your guru, um, Sri Rama Maharidas Babaji, he's staying here at the moment. Um, he's staying with us for six weeks now before he goes back to his ashram. He's based in uh, Vrindavan Dham, uh, which, as devotees know, is uh, a dharm is where the spiritual world touches the material mm. world. And mm. of all of them, I, I think Vrindavan Dham is the most sacred of all, and his temple and his attachment is to Vrindavan Dham. So we're very lucky that he's given up his time um, to come and uh, give us his association. Yeah. Mm, mm. And obviously, we've had just had, a, a, you know, COVID pandemic, and that's put that put a stop or a pause on so many things. And he was coming regularly before 2020, wasn't he? Every year every... without fail for Nam Yagya in, uh, in July Guru. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah. Certainly, Glastonbury has become was famous for many things, but for the seventy-two hour kirtans, yes, uh, you know, and I know devotees from Iskon and other mats that have come to the seventy-two hour kirtan in Glastonbury. Yes. So, do you have plans for that and other things here now the temple's open? Well, we've we've just opened. You know, we're not even open to, to the to the the public yet. We we're still working on how to time how to set the timer on the boiler, you know. <laughs> how, how I've just seen your wife trying to work out yeah, actually. Yeah. So it, it's so difficult at the moment. There are so many things going on. But when we settle down, we have an ambition. Um we, we formed a charity, the Sri Bhakti Seva Trust, of which I'm a, a trustee along with three others. And then we have a wider circle of devotees who are working, providing seva, providing money. We are very, very mm. ambitious about the prospects of the future. We could, and and um, Sri Rambi Haridas Bhaji has set, set up from, from the word go how he wants this temple to, to run. For example, virtually from day one, we've done a, a morning parikram of Glaston, uh, a japa parikram of Glastonbury. We do that rain, shine, snow. At nine o'clock in the morning, we circumambulate Glastonbury and chant Jaffa quietly to get together. That's one example. So I, I've seen um uh, and I'll I'll with this bro with this broadcast we'll put a link to your Facebook page. Thank you. The the Sri Gorkri Padam Facebook page. So I've been following it for a few weeks or yeah. since it's been uh, open and I have seen those you know Facebook live Jaffa walks. Sure, sure. And you know what they remind me of? They what? remind me of seeing the videos and the photos of Srila Prabhupada doing Jaffa walks around Hertfordshire in the 1970s. All right, yeah. Uh, with just that very austere looking Indian gentleman, you know, very... Intense. Intense. Yeah. And there's a group of Westerners... Trailing behind him. Trailing behind <laughs> him. And it reminds me of the footage of Srila Prabhupada around Bhaktivedanta Manor yeah. 50 years ago. 
Um, and on that note, before I forget, uh, is that, um, how do I say this? <laughs> Just say the, it. The, the congregation here is eclectic, eclectic, different. <laughs> different. Yeah. But it's one I could see. I mean, everyone here is, I know labels are difficult and go here, but they're all British. They're all lots of local people from the area, yes. from the, they're all Westerners, as I yes. to put it. Um, um, of course, there are people of Indian heritage in Glastonbury, but the congregation here is is predominantly 100% Western. Yes. My question is, why do you think that is? I don't know if you have an answer for that. Well, I, I'm fairly new to Glastonbury myself. I, I know the town, but um, uh, you, you know, I, I came three years ago and then then didn't come till till now. Uh, but the, I think simply the population is predominantly. Uh, white, white Western. Yeah, um, there are one or two Indians who joined us for Prashad, for Kirtan, uh, but predominantly it just reflects the population as opposed to somewhere like, you know, near London Edge, where Harrow, where the, there are massive Hindu populations. Mm. And so the temples there attract uh, Hindu, uh, Asian, mm. Asian people. Yeah, mm. yeah. and it's as simple as that. And Glastonbury, and there are other places like it in the UK. Uh, I think there's a little, uh, I was going to say Folkestone, maybe a little part of Folkestone is becoming like Glastonbury and Froome is becoming like Glastonbury, that's in Wiltshire, but Glastonbury has been a place, place where people that are interested maybe in India, in India, so Westerners interested in New Age philosophy, yeah. Indian spirituality, even the occult, <laughs> they come, fairies, to, and fairies and yes. uh, you know, Christianity, Indian, yeah, uh, I saw a Sufi shop here, a charity shop here once, I think it's closed now, right. so it, there really is um, if, if you want to come here and explore, you can. And now to have a, a Hare Krishna temple or center sure. is, is quite phenomenal. Yes. Um, just kind of, let's go back in time a little bit. Okay. Tell us a bit about what was it that attracted you to Krishna consciousness all those years ago? You are not this body. You are not this body. Well, you're not this body. No, you are an eternal spirit soul. That attracted me. And there was a book called um, The Science of Self-Realization. And that had some answers to eternal questions. And I mean, if you're working in a supermarket, you're looking for eternal questions <laughs> at this point. Um, and so, yeah, Prabhupada, he said, you know, you're not this body, you're an et eternal. And then you start reading more, you read the Bhagavad Gita and, you know, um, you, you read a passage, I, what does it say? Uh, for the soul, there is never birth nor death, nor having once been, does he ever mm. cease to be? He is unborn, eternal, ever existing, primeval. Very powerful verses, you know, and you say, I want to know a bit more about this. You know, instinctively, and uh, this is another thing about Glastonbury, the world is going through a hard, hard time at the moment. This again was forecast in the Vedas that this age we're living in is known as the Kali Yuga, the age of quarrel, hypocrisy degradation and we've had what we have about covid climate change now we've got a war in the ukraine it just gets worse um but uh Vaishnavism, the vedas it gave a simple answer mm. and, and it was the simple answer you know it's and the simple answer is that this can be overcome by a simple mantra the Hare krishna mantra How, can i say the Hare krishna mantra yeah of course you know? Hari, we say it with me. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. So it said that the the antidote to the um, Kali Yu to this town living is a simple mantra, and I, as I said, I nailed my flag to that mass many many years ago, and so in any small way that I've been able to pass that message on, I, I have done so, and. Sri Rama Bihari does bad. He lives this. He chants endlessly, sings bad chants. He chants kirtan. He, and, and so I was very, very privileged to be able to, to help him do this. You can't do this on, on your own. Mm. You, you've got to do it as a community under the guidance of, of a self-realized guru. And he's the real deal. Mm. He just is. Mm. Well, I've, I've really, uh, I try not to use the word enjoy, we, you know, uh, well, 
kind of advised against it. But I really liked <laughs> spending time here today at the temple. It's been, I mean, I love Glastonbury anyway. I wish I, I had the time to spend more time in Glastonbury. But it's been great coming to see, see a number of things really. See, you've got, you've got a kind of a Hare Krishna temple here in Britain uh, that it's kind of focused on Bhakti. That's been inspiring. Uh, there was a Yagya fire ceremony happening today. You were, I, very, you were very lucky to arrive today. Yeah, yeah I, I sat in, I sat in on that. Yeah, uh, and that was great. And it's great to meet a lot of the devotees here. And we shared prasadam together and took darshan, wonderful Radha Krishna born Ataya deities, uh, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra deities, all the deities, those of you in other mats, uh, we all share the same uh, love for the same Lord. Um, they're all here. And um, yeah, I'd encourage anyone to visit. And it's actually right next to the big public car park. And Glastonbury car park was super cheap. I paid like five pounds for 24 hours, which is yeah. like five pounds for 10 minutes in London, I think. Um, so I really kind of liked being here. Um, what I mean, what? So the plans going forward, you're going to have maybe programs for people to come and attend. We were, right. So we were talking about this. Weren't we? What's the, what are the ambitions going forward? Currently, we do this morning parikram. We do a weekly uh, Nagasankirtan around Glastonbury, and we do a weekly prashad and distribution to the homeless on, on the streets. Um, my personal ambition for this will be to increase the, this, providing people come along uh, that want to do savor. So if somebody comes, ah, I really want to do the food program, then they'll be encouraged to help us with that. And one day, maybe we can go into other towns, we can go into Taunton, Bridgewater, Yeovil, mm. and we can run food programs, Harinam. That that would be absolutely fantastic. Mm. We have a, a daily Kirtan uh, program in the evening, RT and Kirtan. Um, as I said, we're not quite open to the public yet, but people are, are welcome to come and have a, mm. have a look at mm. what we're doing. I feel like in one sense, I've kind of caught you off guard because I'm asking these questions about the future of the temple and what you're going to do. And you think, well, we've just got the keys, you know? And, we've just got the keys. And, and your yeah. Guru Maharaj is here. And, yeah. you know, we're, you're serving him at the moment. And, and life is absolutely frantic and intense. So saying we, we can't even set the timer on the boiler. So we, we are, we, we're trying to learn all that. We're trying to get kitchens put in. So to keep the place safe, mm. keep the sacred places sacred. And uh, so it's it's very intense, but very, very enjoyable. You know, we we go, we go to bed at night, we crash with a, a smile on our faces, mm. you know. Mm. But one of the other things I'd like to say about the community here is um, there is a, a real mix. It's not like in the olden days of ISKCON where everyone in the temple was uh, a follower of Srila Prabhupada. We have a, a, a real mix of, of devotees here, some who have been initiated by Narayan Maharaj, some who are Anna devotees, you know, had the odd Shiva devotee. Um, and our guru, he, he, he's so compassionate and magnanimous. On our altar, we close them up, but you'll see any lots of pictures of gurus of the past mm. who have, uh, in some ways, uh, introduced or helped spread uh, the holy name in this this country and the, and in India, you know Narayan Maharaj is there, um, Anna Mai, Srila Prabhupada is on the altar, Sri Prabhupada, beautiful murti of Srila Prabhupada on the altar. In fact, he said uh, said to me on I think on the first day, um, he said um, we need to have a picture of Jesus Christ in this temple. We're at the center of Christendom. Uh, we need to have. Uh, Jesus Christ here represented. Uh, so that, that's the type of, of guru he is. But he's also a, a very, he, he, he wants things done very quickly. Again, on the first day, um, he said, um, I want to start the food program. And we said, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll do that maybe five, six weeks when, when you leave us. He said, no, 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 we, we, need, we need to start. So he said, when? He said, tomorrow. He said, but how can why tomorrow he said well i've been here a day already we need to we need to get going <laughs> so on day two of being in the temple we, we 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 did the food distribution on the streets to the homeless and it was well received and and it was the right thing to do mm. and this will carry on well certainly in, in certainly in terms of the godia vaishnav tradition i haven't yet counted the number of mats that are represented here but it's it's certainly quite a lot there's certainly a lot of actually a lot Srila Prabhupada himself has quite a few disciples living in Glastonbury I think I think I counted around eight disciples of Srila Prabhupada living locally or nearby yes, yes. 
Uh, of course, Ra uh, Ranshaw Prabhu. I, I've, uh, I've met Ranshaw in who, who runs, I think, Bhagavad Gita classes or used to run Bhagavad Gita classes in the Tang Hall or somewhere near there uh, on a regular basis. And I, I first, first met Ranshaw in Manchester when he was uh, president of the Manchester Temple in about 1978. He sold me my first Bhagavad Gita. Wow. So I've known Ranshaw oh, many, many years. And over the years, I've bumped into him various places. So mm. yeah, he's here. Um, and there's there's also a lot of kind of kind of Gaudiya Vaishnav history here. There's a lot of I was gonna say old timers, that sounds a fed, but a lot of older devotees uh that are that are living here too, because one of the instructions that Jai Tirtha gave to his disciples back in the early 80s was to go and live in Glastonbury. So there's actually a, a I don't know the number, a number of Jai Tirtha disciples. Yes. Uh and I won't mention this person's name because I don't have permission, but I've visited lots of devotees' homes over the last 20 years. And I've I've been to this one person's home with a picture of Jai Tirtha, right. and, and this person had it. And that was here in Glastonbury. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I, I'm aware that there are uh, older devotees, uh, Iskand devotees, and I'm looking forward to meeting up with some. I've got I've got friends here apparently, and I, I know the names, but they've they've been here many years, and I've not seen them for many years. So I, I'm really looking forward to catching up with some mm. very old friends again, you know. It's fascinating. And uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this at the start of the broadcast. So this this mat, the devotees, the followers, the, the well-wishers, the disciples, sorry, of Sri Ramu Maharaj Babaji are mentioned on page 108. Thank you for that. Um, do you know you. what? That completely <laughs> was not anything that I planned. Uh, it's in the section in my book, The Harry Krishnas in Britain, on the, on the, in, in the Nityananda you know, the Janavi Mata line. And it just so happens that when it went to print, that the section about Sri Ramaharas Babaji is on page 108. Can it's... I tell them about the other cosmic coincidence this morning? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Sri Ma Bhagavatam Plus this morning, we were on uh, the first canto, uh, chapter 13. And in chapter 13, it, it suddenly came up, it said, uh, and suddenly uh, Sri Narada appeared. That moment, Narada Prabhu walked through the door and I burst out laughing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cosmic coincidence. Yeah, I, I definitely didn't time that. No. And it wasn't talking about me. But um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you want to find out more about certainly, you know, uh, this mat and in terms of the Nityananda line and the, the devotees, please read. Obviously, want you to re read, uh, come here and visit the temple, but also read my book. Uh, and I, I think that certain terms of the Gaudiya Vaishnav family. I think that I, that probably outside of the Sarasvat line, Sri Rama Maharaj Babaji has the largest number of disciples. Uh, I suspect. A godbrother of yours once told me it was around 25 or 30 yeah, yeah. disciples in the UK. Yeah, based, based, uh, in Glastonbury. Andy has a, a following in Wales. In so Wales. he's going to Wales later on. Yeah. yeah. But do, do you mind if I talk for a minute just a, a bit about, about him, about something? Absolutely. Him, what, what attracted um, I went to visit him in his, uh, where he is the Mahant of the Sri Radhagirid Hari temple in Sri Vrindavan Dham. And one thing that, I, I know it's God first and, and social work second, but he is an incredible humanitarian. Mm. In his temple, um, he has built a clinic where daily, well, this was before COVID, I think it's about to open again. Before COVID, every day, 75 to 100 of the poorest people got free treatment in, in this clinic. Uh, and the doctor, his saver was, he spent half a day working free for Baba, and then he ran his own clinic in the afternoon. Um, he has a, a Goshala on, on site, you know, they, they look after cows. He runs a refugee center in Chhattisgarh where he looks after the Bengali refugees. Um, in winter in uh, his temple, blankets, fleeces for the children distributed and weekly hundreds of sadhus turn up where they're given food and so he's an incredible humanitarian uh, as well as a spiritual guru. Yeah. And it was that, to be honest, I was probably more attracted by, by that facet mm. of, of his character uh, than the than his spirituality, which I've come to um, to appreciate, mm, yeah, mm. the kind of social action element, his his missionary work, yes, is a term we don't often use in the Hare Krishna, but his, his missionary compassion, work. Totally yeah, compassion, yeah, yeah, and he's also very humble. We're talking about the the way we're all working here at the moment. 
And he said to me, he said, you know, Tirkana, you're working, she's working, she's working, everybody's working, except for me. I, I, <laughs> I, am, I just jumped a bit of, bit of like them. Very beautiful. It's fascinating, yeah. And um, I mean, I, uh, I think I actually uh, got a little bit emotional earlier when we were chatting and preparing for this podcast, because you mentioned how you'd been in ISKCON for 40 years. Yeah, yeah. You'd been searching, and then you met, uh, you weren't initiated, for a number of reasons. And I, you know, I had a conversation with someone else recently that waited 25 years in his for initiation, despite working his rear end off at his temple, never got initiated, and then took initiation elsewhere. And I'm really pleased that you have found your guide, your guru, sure. uh, you know, Shiram Maharidas Babaji. Uh, we had a brief chat earlier in, in, in the Prashad room, myself and your guru Maharaj, and he's very humble, um, you know, very, Nice, <laughs> very, very nice to talk. He's to. simple, just yeah. nice. Yeah, he, 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 he doesn't sit on the sand. He sits on the floor and he just sings his music and and, and gives us, a, you know, he gives us instruction. And yeah, so no, he's very, very simple. Wow. Um, well, Tirsanath Prabhu, it's been fantastic to have you on this week's edition of the Harry Christians in Britain podcast. Thank you so much for letting me talk to you about our new venture in Glastonbury. Can we do another one in a year or so? We'll Absolutely. Catch up on Absolutely. How it's going. And uh, I really hope that devotees and non-devotees listening to this, watching this, come and visit. It's a really, I mean, Glastonbury is quite special anyway, but um, it's, it's a very special place, this temple, that I will certainly come back and visit. Uh, so thank you for... That's a pleasure. Thank you Absolutely. for... And you kept your word. Several months ago, I asked you to be on the podcast. You did. And you said... I don't enjoy being on a camera, but I promised I'd do this one. And I said, I'll be come down when the after the temple's yeah. open, we can we can do it. So I'm here. So thank you to everyone for tuning in to this week's edition of the Harry Christians in Britain podcast. Uh, if you're watching this either on YouTube or on Facebook, do like it, do put a positive comment and share the link with your friends and family. And above this broadcast, you will see all the, the really positive links to uh, uh, this temple here in Glastonbury. Uh, until next time, Harry Krishna. Harry Krishna.